Today we are going to compare four Forest River brand RVs, less than or close to 5,000 pounds total weight. These cover a spectrum from marketed for off-road to marketed for RV parks. This video covers trailers that are heavier and longer than we would normally cover on this channel, but it does make an interesting comparison of different Forest River options. Hi, I'm with my friend Michelle, who's an awesome mom who wants to camp with her kids and wants to trade up from a pop-up camper. So I'm looking for a smallish camper that also has a toilet, a heater, bunk beds, and a refrigerator. Let's go look! The RVs we're going to look at vary in starting price from around $28,000 to upwards of $44,000. I honestly started off thinking I would find major differences between these, but frankly, they're all very similar. I'll try to highlight the major differences as I go. Sorry, but I'm going to step on a soapbox for a minute. After we visited these and I started doing research for this video, I was reminded about how much bad information there is out there about RVs. Don't take anyone's word for unique features or what your tow vehicle can tow, including me. If you watch some of the sales videos for these, you will hear about exclusive to this model features that are almost always available on anything we looked at. Examples are a black tank wash outlet, which is a nice feature I have to say, and on all of these trailers, or the centralized vacuum system shared between the R-Pod and no boundaries. Okay, I'm off my soapbox, onto the trailers. The first camper we looked at was a Forest River No Boundaries or Nobo 19.3. This is a 24 foot, four inch long trailer with a dry weight of 4,199 pounds. This is a dual axle trailer, so the carrying capacity is high with a fully loaded weight of 7,550 pounds, making it the longest and heaviest camper we looked at with Michelle. You could probably keep this to 5,000 pounds fully loaded because many trailers in this class only have about 1,000 pounds or less of carrying capacity. However, you'd have to watch your weight carefully. This model of No Boundaries has a dry bath with a shower separated from the toilet and sleeps four to five with large bunks, a convertible dinette single bed, and a queen size Murphy bed. It has a 30 gallon freshwater tank, a 30 gallon gray water tank, and a 30 gallon black tank. These campers have a fiberglass exterior and aluminum frame, which minimizes wood in the construction. They're marketed for off-road camping and so have enclosed bottoms, which means that your tanks and tubes are protected from bumps and rocks if you're traveling off pavement. There is also another model in this class of no boundaries, the 19.8 with bunk beds. While we were not able to see this one, it is worth mentioning here. It has a slide out, but is shorter and lighter. So if you're looking for a true less than 5,000 pound total weight trailer, this one might be a better bet. The 19.8 is 22 feet 8 inches long with a dry weight of 3,798 pounds and a maximum weight of 4,795 pounds. The main difference between this and the 19.3 is that with the slide out, there's a different shaped dinette with wraparound seating and a folding table. The seating could easily be used as a couch instead of a dining area. The bunks are smaller and the queen bed sleeps side to side versus the pull down Murphy bed. Otherwise, the features are similar between the two. The 19 series no boundary exterior has a power awning option. They also have roof storage racks for kayaks or other larger gear, along with outside access compartments, and probably the unique feature for the camper we looked at, a flip up bunk so that you can store bikes inside, along with two additional access compartments for storage. They also have options for solar. Inside, you will find a six cubic foot fridge, a large 18 inch sink, and a two burner cooktop and optional convection microwave. The 19.3 is 24 feet long, so there's tons of storage inside. The bunks are large enough that they claim you can sleep two kids per bunk. The pull down Murphy bed is a true queen size bed. The dinette is tiny for something that can sleep this many people, but you also have a sofa under the Murphy bed that you could use as additional eating space if you needed to be inside. The dry bath has a pretty large shower and a small medicine cabinet for storage, in addition to under sink storage. Both this and the R-Pod have an internal vacuum, an interesting feature. Basically you activate it with your foot and it can suck up anything you sweep up. 
I put a link in the comments to a video about this feature. After the no boundaries, we looked at an R-Pod. They did not have any R-Pods with bunk beds in stock. Those are hard to come by these days and are back ordered, but we were able to see the general layout and features. I'm going to talk about the 193 bunk model here because that is what Michelle would consider. The R-Pod is very similar to the Novo. It is constructed in the same way, including the fully enclosed underbelly, though you cannot put gear on the roof. The R-Pod 193 is one inch short of 22 feet long with a dry weight of 3,645 pounds and a max weight of 4,826 pounds. The 193 includes a slide out which expands the seating area. It has a dry bath with separate shower and toilet and sleeps four to five with bunks, a convertible sofa single bed, and a 60 by 74 inch Murphy bed, which is six inches short of a queen. The dinette is a folding table and couch, which is the same as the Nobo 19.8 and may or may not be everyone's preference. Like the other models, the R-Pod 193 has 30 gallon fresh, gray, and black tanks. The R-Pod has a smaller awning option than the Nobo at 10 feet versus 16 feet and has solar options. It is missing the large cargo door and flip up bunks, but has the same front cargo storage options and a rear cargo option that is pretty good sized. Inside, you'll find the exact same kitchen as in the Nobo 19 series, with a six cubic foot fridge, the same 18 inch sink, and a two burner cooktop and optional convection microwave. This is two feet shorter than the Nobo 19.3 and the same size as the 19.8. The extra two feet in the larger Nobo gets you a full queen-sized walk-around bed. Otherwise, the storage is essentially the same, though it's laid out differently in the R-Pod. The R-Pod has smaller bunks that are open on the end, which might require some kind of curtain if you want to put the kids to sleep before the adults and all be inside. It also has a smaller bathroom with a sink inside the shower, which looked a little awkward. It has a dinette with a folding table and sofa, which may or may not be everyone's preference that you could take that table outside pretty easily, which means you carry only one table. Compared to the Novo, it looked like the R-Pod was basically the same with a different layout. So this is probably a personal preference for what kind of layout you're looking for. Now we moved on to the Vibe 17DB. This is built the same way as the R-Pod and Novo, aluminum framed with fiberglass siding. However, they are not marketed for off-road and are not as high off the ground they do still have the same enclosed undercarriage. The Vibe 17DB is 22 feet, five inches long with a dry weight of 3,789 pounds and a fully loaded weight of 4,930 pounds. There is no slide on the Vibe, which makes it a bit simpler from the other models in this video. It sleeps four to five with large bunks, a convertible dinette, and a 60 by 74 inch Murphy bed. Again, six inches short of a queen. Like the other models, this has 30 gallon fresh black and gray water tanks. The Vibe has a 15 foot awning option, as well as exterior speaker options and has a solar prep option, but does not have solar panel factory installed, which again speaks to the marketing towards people who will primarily camp with power hookups. There's the same front cargo storage as the Nobo and R-Pod and the rear storage has an option for an outdoor kitchen, which is one of my favorite RV features. I believe there's some variation of the outdoor kitchen available on both the R-Pod and the Nobo. In Vibe, the outdoor kitchen includes a fridge. However, the fridge is 110 volt, so it will only work if you're plugged into shore power or running a generator or battery inverter. Unlike the other models so far, this one also has an outdoor shower, which is another nice feature. Inside, you'll find a similar kitchen as in the others with the same six cubic foot fridge. The sink is different in the Vibe and I found it to be weirdly small with a huge faucet. There's also a two burner cooktop and optional microwave. There's an option for a flip up counter on the side of the kitchen, which could add some needed counter space. Like the R-Pod, this has a slightly smaller than Queen Murphy bed. Like the Nobo, the bunks are extra large. The bunks here are also pretty open on the end, which in my family would require some kind of curtain. The storage is slightly less than the other models. I think you sacrifice the pantry for the larger bunks and the two-seater dinette. This is similar enough to the Nobo and R-Pod that I would say it comes down to preference for your layouts. You don't get a front window on this model, which may or may not matter to you. Losing the slide gives you slightly less space inside, but does make things a bit more simple. 
Possibly the interior of this is lower quality. I'd check that out if you're doing a comparison. I personally think I like this layout the best to be honest, but I tend towards simple. Last we moved on to the Aurora 18 BHS. This one is made differently than the others. They are aluminum sided over wood frames, which is possibly slightly inferior to the fiberglass over aluminum of the other three models, because you have the potential for the wood frame to get wet. We looked at the Aurora 18 BHS, which is 23 feet 1 inches long, with a dry weight of 4,202 pounds and a max weight of 5,500 pounds. This one is really over the weight limit we were considering, but you could possibly keep it to 5,000 if you were careful, though that wouldn't be my preference. The Aurora 18 BHS includes a slide out, which expands the U-shaped dining area. It has a dry bath with separate shower and toilet and sleeps four to five with large bunks, a convertible dinette, and a 60 by 74 inch Murphy bed. Again, six inches short of a queen. Like the other models, the Aurora 18 BHS has 30 gallon gray and black tanks, but it has a larger freshwater tank at 44 gallons. The Aurora has a 15 foot awning option and exterior speaker options, as well as coming solar enabled and with solar mounted options. It is missing the large cargo door and flip up bunks, but has the same front cargo storage options and a huge passenger side cargo access that can also be an outdoor kitchen. The outdoor kitchen option is similar to the Vibe with the 110 refrigerator, but it has more storage. Inside, you'll find a similar kitchen as in the others, but not identical. The sink is different in the Aurora and much larger than the Vibe. The two burner cooktop is also a different model, with the burners being front to back instead of next to each other. It also has an overburner exhaust, which I think is a nice feature, also found on the RPOD and Nobo, and a microwave. It has a 10 cubic foot all electric fridge. Like the RPOD and Vibe, this has a slightly smaller than Queen Murphy bed. Like the Nobo, the bunks are extra large. The bunks here are closed on the ends and have a curtain already installed. This one looks like it has the least interior storage with no pantry and no storage over the dinette. But you do get a much larger wraparound dinette, which would make eating inside much easier with the whole family. You also don't get a front window on this model, which may or may not matter to you. You gotta love when you can end a video with a chart. Or is that just me? Let's recap the key similarities and differences of these models. The price range is from around $30,000 to $44,000 for the most basic models. They all have similar holding tanks, with the Aurora winning for slightly larger fresh water. The Nobo 19.8, RPOD, and Vibe are all truly 5,000 pounds total weight. The Nobo 19.3 is the only one with a dual axle. The Nobo 19.8, RPOD, and Aurora all have slides. The Nobos are true queen beds. The Nobo 19.3, Vibe, and Aurora have extra large bunks. The RPOD has the smallest bathroom. The Aurora is built with aluminum siding over a wood frame, compared to the rest that have fiberglass siding over aluminum frames. The Aurora also has a larger fridge, but it does not run off of propane. Only the Vibe has a true outdoor shower. Whew, all right, that's it. I'll be honest. That was a difficult video to make. It is confusing out there. These things all have similar features and yet differences. Best bet is to go out and take a look. Don't forget to have fun. That's what we're really here for anyway. Hope you enjoyed the tour. Don't forget to subscribe so you can catch all our latest videos and find out which travel trailer Michelle buys for her family. Or you can find us online at outdoorsmadesimple.com.